Welcome to ESC TV. I am Paulus Kirchhoff. I'm a professor of cardiovascular medicine at the University of Birmingham and I'm also still working for the University of Münster. I am joined today by Michele Brignoli, the chairperson of the 2013 ESC guidelines on cardiac pacing and resynchronization. Over 70 people have helped to write these all new guidelines. Welcome Michele. Welcome. Now, Michele, one of the main changes that you actually proposed in your guidelines is that you have a new classification of bradyarrhythmias in your guidelines, which is a classification based on the presentation as continuous or episodic. Can you tell us briefly why you put forward this change? The reason was to uh, uh, produce a guideline that could be easily understood by the clinical uh, uh, cardiologist at the bedside of the patient. In general, the guidelines are based on aesiological cl classification, on aesiology of the arrhythmias. But what the uh, uh, clinician see is not the aesiology, is uh, the clinical presentation. Uh, uh, this means the electrocardiogram in, patient, uh, in the case of body arrhythmia. So we uh, made this classification uh, so that the, the clinician could immediately uh, realize uh, uh, which uh, type of recommendation uh, suit well uh, for uh, the, the case, uh, the individual case. So uh, following this reasoning we had, uh, we classify potential candidate for bloody pacing in a patient with uh, persistent electrocardiographic uh, bradycardia, with intermittent bradycardia with uh, electrocardiographic documentation and in patient with, uh, without electrocardiographic documentation in whom uh, an intermittent bradycardia was highly suspected. The recommendation followed this classification. This seems like an approach that is very usable for the clinician. Nonetheless, I think you have still a guideline that is written by experts and giving expert advice. Can you pinpoint to us the main changes that you implemented in the new guidelines compared to the prior version? The, the, the most important changes uh, uh, were in the field of cardiac synchronization therapy because uh, we could benefit from a large amount of a very important randomized trial that have been published since the publication of the previous 2007 guideline. Uh, uh, to summarize, the main change is that we gave a priority to the morphology of the QRS in, the, in the selecting the, the best candidate for uh, CRT and uh, being uh, those with large band, left band and branch block, those that have the highest probability to benefit from CRT and those with narrow QRS, those who have the less uh, probability. And as we have just learned today at this Congress, this was actually as if you were predicting the future because we have just seen another negative trial on patient with CRT and narrow QRS. Exactly. Are there any changes with respect to bradycardia pacing that we should pinpoint towards a clinician? Yes, uh, we benefited from uh, some trial that could allow us to change the indication for uh, the mode of pacing sick sinus syndrome, uh, being AAI pacing mode not uh, not useful and uh, a new indication for patient with syncope, band branch block and, and in patient with reflex uh, syncope with a documentation of uh, a reflex asystole with loop recorder. Thank you Michele for sharing these valuable insights into the new 2013 ESC guidelines on cardiac pacing. Thank to you for the interview. ESC Congress 365 is your free access to ESC Congress content all year long.